Welcome, good morning, good afternoon, and thank you everyone for joining the opening session of the very first ADB Gender Forum. The forum is entitled The Power to Transform Gender Equality in Asia and the Pacific. And of course, it's been designed to inform, influence, and inspire action on gender equality in Asia and the Pacific region. My name is Jamela Alendogan, and I will be your moderator and host today. Thank you for joining us. I'd like to invite ADB's president, Masatsugu Osakawa, to deliver the official opening remarks. President Masatsugu Osakawa, President Mas Masa, the floor is yours. Pleasure to welcome you to the first ADB Gender Forum. I am very encouraged that there are over 1,500 participants registered for this event. The theme of our forum is fitting and relevant because gender equality does indeed have the tremendous power to transform. As the world emerges from the pandemic and rebuilt for a strong and lasting recovery, we must continue to work together to empower women and girls in Asia and the Pacific. We can do so in many important ways. Why? by ensuring that the economies work for women, by finding ways for infrastructure to serve the needs of women and girls, by supporting and increasing women's participation in initiatives focused on addressing climate change, such as projects to support the energy transition, and by addressing gendered patterns of discrimination. Let me share a few reflections on the transformative potential of gender equality in this context and on ADB's efforts to support this crucial agenda. First, as you all know well, the COVID-19 and climate crisis have disproportionately impacted women and deepened existing inequalities. Women are overrepresented in the lowest paid and informal jobs which are at greater risk from climate variability and climate shocks. As we look beyond the pandemic, our region needs to rebuild for healthy societies that are just, inclusive, and sustainable. To accomplish this, countries must view gender equality as central to social and economic development. They must embrace the importance of creating a new and inclusive normal in order to remain competitive and resilient. Let me turn to ADB's efforts to support the development of women and girls. First, ADB has committed to mainstreaming gender equality in strategy 2030. We aim for at least 75% of the total number of our committed operations to incorporate gender inclusive project designs by 2030. Second, our support for recovery from the pandemic is placing increased emphasis on strengthening gender equality. For example, ADB will focus on the transformative gender agenda of Sustainable Development Goals 5, addressing pervasive gender inequalities, such as unpaid care and gender-based violence. Third, in line with recent calls from COP26, ADB will fully support gender-responsive climate action. Our climate finance targets are ambitious. By 2030, 75% of the total number of ADB's operations will support climate action, while climate finance from ADB's own resources will reach $100 billion cumulatively by 2030. As part of this, ADB will support women's resilience to climate change through our Community Resilience Partnership Program, which will work directly with women's organizations at the community level. And as the Region Climate Bank, ADB will also enhance its efforts to support a just transition to renewable energy and other sustainable practices that contribute to gender transformative change. Let me close by expressing my optimism in our collective efforts to reimagine and create our region. Over the next few, year, few days, 
participants will hear from leaders about their vision and experiences uh, with good practice and innovation. In your discussions, I urge you to keep in mind those whose futures depend on our actions. The adolescent who is growing up in a fast changing world and the young woman who is about to enter the workforce. Let us commit to work together to take that. Single women and girls. So that. opportunities. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, President Massa. Indeed, if we only put all of our efforts into transforming a region with a commitment to gender equality, then for sure we can create a sustainable and fair future. Again, thank you again, President Massa, also for reminding us of the importance of remembering those girls whose futures depend on our actions. Next, I would like to share the forums video to show the future and the kind of future that we do want for women and girls. Let's watch this. To shape the future of women is in our power. What kind of world do we want for them? A girl born today will live in an unequal society where she is likely to face more economic, social, mental, and physical hardships than boys as she grows up. In school, she may be discouraged to take classes that are not for girls. She may be one of the 12 million girls each year who are married before she turns 18. She might only make 77 cents for every dollar a man makes for doing the same job. She might even be pressured to choose between having a career or having children. And laws might not fully protect her right to a safe and healthy work environment. She might be one in four women who will experience gender-based violence. In most cases, the perpetrator will not be a stranger, but a partner, a family member, a friend, or a neighbor. Asia hosts the largest number of women and girls killed by their intimate partner. What if we can change all of that? Imagine being born into a world where girls know they can achieve anything and they can shape their own dreams. A world where no one will stop her from getting an education because there are no limits to what she can achieve. She will be fairly compensated and will work among colleagues who respect her contributions. She will have a seat at the table break glass ceilings, and open doors for other women to follow. She won't have to choose between a career and a family because she can have both, if she wants, when she wants. She will live a life free from violence because that is her fundamental right. She will live in a world where she is valued without discrimination and bias. This alternative future is possible. The world has made progress on gender equality, yet it will still take 270 years to close the gender pay gap. 270 years is too long. Today, as we face a pandemic and a climate crisis, we have the opportunity to construct a different future for women and girls and shape the future for all of us and the planet. ADB is committed to accelerating gender equality in the Asia and Pacific region. We support and engage women so they may fully benefit from everything we do to help girls realize that anything is possible. To support women to be able to enjoy decent work and break into fields where they have been excluded in the past. To support women's access to food, water, to everything our planet offers and lead on climate change action and to be agents of change in their communities. Because when women thrive, all of humanity thrives. We at ADB are working to transform women's lives. Will you join us?
an alternative future, yes, but that is all possible. And why not? This is why I think we should all strive for it. This is why UN Women is also a key partner for ADB and a regional and international development partner promoting gender equality and supporting women's empowerment at all levels. Our next speaker is Under Secretary General and UN Women Executive Director Sima Bahus. But unfortunately, she could not join us live today because of the time difference. But we are grateful and happy to share this pre-recorded video with her opening remarks. Good afternoon. I thank the Asian Development Bank President, Masatsugu Akasawa, for inviting me to join him in opening the Asian Development Bank's first gender forum. I extend a warm welcome to all of you. We gather at a critical moment for gender equality. COVID-19 showed us that gender equality gains are fragile and they are at risk. Resilient women were our social backbone during the pandemic as caregivers, community leaders, healthcare workers, in the service industry, and much more. Yet, while women were battling to support their communities, their rights were being rolled back. Gender equality is at risk on multiple fronts. Since the start of COVID-19, UN Women has uncovered growing evidence of escalating violence against women. This is rightly called the shadow pandemic. The economic repercussions of the crisis were also far tougher on women. While women make up 39% of the global workforce, they accounted for 54% of COVID-related job losses. Their access to basic necessities, such as food and health care during the crisis, has also proven far more fragile than that of men. The cumulative price of the pandemic for gender equality has been too high. That's why the theme of today's conference, the power to transform, is so timely. We must transform the global infrastructure for gender equality if we are to rebuild and recover from this pandemic. The rights of women and girls must be grounded in a strong foundation that is resilient to future shocks. We will need knowledge, innovation and investment to get there and to reach our aspirations for SDG 5. Firstly, we need the data and knowledge to understand the realities of women's lives, experiences, it is necessary to understand gender gaps and challenges in order to solve them. Secondly, we must innovate new solutions that bring women and girls with us. For example, as new jobs are created, we must make sure women have the training and opportunity to access these jobs. And finally, we must be prepared to make the necessary investment to shift our systems and practices towards gender equality. International financial institutions have a critical role to play to level the playing field for women and girls. That is why I am so proud of UN Women's partnership with the Asian Development Bank. It seeks to accelerate gender equality through these three lenses. Together, we will initiate research into critical trends and gaps in the post-COVID landscape. We will innovate new programming. For example, we will create more gender responsive value chains, tackle violence against women and integrate women into climate action. And together, we will illustrate the impact of scaled up investments. I am grateful to the Asian Development Bank for their visionary leadership. Our actions at this conference today will shape the future of gender equality, not only across the Asia Pacific region, but around the world. We must all work together to achieve a vision of equality that is lasting and sustainable. A vision that not only propels the lives and hopes of the world's women and girls, but that fuels our communities, our economies, and the trajectories of entire regions and countries. My ask to all of you today to think about how your own institutions can stretch further to accelerate gender equality 
in collaboration with UN Women. Thank you for your partnership and enjoy the conference. Enjoy the conference. I'd like to then introduce Samantha Hong. She's the chief of the Gender Equality Thematics Group, Sustainable Development and Climate Change Department of ADB. As of this morning, we had over 1,500 registered participants spanning across the globe from 74 countries and multiple time zones, representing our geographic regions of focus and beyond. These, this includes representatives from a wide range of stakeholders and partners, and these numbers are increasing as we speak. So one may ask, why are we convening this gender forum and why now? Well, we at the Asian Development Bank have a vision for a better future for women and girls in Asia and the Pacific region. And ADB has made ambitious commitments to accelerate gender equality as one of seven operational priorities in our corporate strategy 2030. Our region has made great strides in advancing gender equality and women's empowerment over past decades. But as you've heard from President Massa and um, UN Women's Executive Director Bahus, over the last two years, it has been made increasingly clear that this progress is very fragile and that we must build a stronger foundation where gender equality is at the core of everything we do so that hard-won gender equality gains are never put at risk. But we cannot do this alone. We all have an important role to play to realize this vision, and therefore you are here to join the conversation so that we can learn from each other and build our momentum to collectively push forward. So to our developing member countries, we welcome you as our primary clients, and because it is with you that we design, implement, and learn to maximize development results on the ground. To our private sector partners, we welcome you because we recognize the huge potential for enhancing gender equality through private sector leadership. To our ADB colleagues, welcome, because together we carry and share this responsibility to deliver as an institution on our commitments to gender equality. To our development partners, because you support, you collaborate with us and we have dialogue and this both inspires and challenges us to enhance our effectiveness. And your innovation, research and advocacy give us new insights and tools. And lastly, to women's organizations, because you continue to work on behalf of women and gender equality under increasingly challenging circumstances. And without you, we know that much of the progress we have made so far would not have been possible. So we have put together a diverse and rich program over the next four days with speakers who are some of the thought leaders in our region and beyond. I'm sure you'll find them both inf informative and inspirational. In terms of format, there will be three types of daily sessions. Firstly, spotlight sessions, where a leading speaker will share visionary ideas, research and innovation in relation to the day's theme. Secondly, good practice panels with multiple experts to highlight key issues, challenges and lessons learned. And lastly, knowledge labs, which are interactive sessions co-hosted by a wide range of partners to showcase practical tools and initiatives. The program is designed around four daily themes. Day one today is about making economies work for women, skills, jobs, and care. Tomorrow, day two is about quality infrastructure for gender equality. And on Wednesday, day three, we'll focus on empowering women through climate action. And then the last day, Thursday, is on the theme of new frontiers for gender equality. There will also be a special event on Thursday, 25th of November to commemorate the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women, or IDEVOR for short. And we will culminate in a forum closing session with special speakers and to recap and feature key highlights of the forum discussions. Now, how do all the logistics work? Once logged on to the attendee hub, please select and join any sessions that you wish to attend. The attendee hub also contains videos that illustrate some of ADB's work on gender equality for you to view at your convenience. During sessions, we really encourage you to actively ask questions through the Q&A function. And Russian language live interpretation and closed captioning is available on the platform for those who wish to use it. In addition, you may notice that we are capturing sessions visually with the help of some graphic artists, a company known as Tofu Creatives. And in case you miss any session, no problem, it will be recorded and you will be able to watch it later through the attendee hub. 
Each day in your email inbox, starting from tomorrow morning Manila time, you will also receive a summary from the day before. And we are also offering something called informal chai chat spaces on a range of suggested topics for anyone who would just like to network and talk to other participants in a smaller and casual group setting. You will see on the event site that these can be found under the community tab and they are scheduled in between the formal forum sessions. Lastly, we invite you to please actively share your thoughts and insights from the forum on your social media with hashtag ADB Gender Forum. And with that, that's all left to say at this point is that we look forward to four days of lively, thought-provoking discussion and interaction with all of you. Thank you very much and back to you, Jamela. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. We also asked the ADB staff about their views on gender equality from Georgia to Fiji, Laos PDR to Mongolia. Here are their voices. Let's watch this video. I support gender equality because it's a fundamental human right. And without it, sustainable development is simply impossible to achieve. Societies with more gender quality are more sustainable, healthier, and more prosperous. Everyone benefits. Achieving gender equality is one of the cross-cutting sustainable development goals, and that is why accelerating progress in gender equality is one of ADB's seven operational priorities under Strategy 2030. As an institution, ADB cannot credibly ask of others what we do not practice ourselves. And that is why we are striving to walk the talk. Our female staff ratio has continued to increase year on year. We are working to have more women as leaders, and we are making conscious efforts to strive for more. However, there is still much to be done. The pandemic's effects have widened gender gaps. We have an opportunity to build back better now and to advance gender equality in a way that is sustainable. I, for one, will continue my support here at ADB, along with our partners in the Asia and the Pacific. I support gender equality, not just because it's a moral and a social priority and an issue, but because fundamentally it's a development imperative. Progress towards gender equality was marginal across the region even before the onset of COVID-19. And the pandemic has had negative repercussions and a regressive effect on gender equality across the Asia Pacific region. Here in Mongolia, where I work, our studies show that normalizing labor force participation of women and men could boost GDP by up to 5%. So as countries across the region now look to rebuild in the wake of COVID-19, it's important that the role of women in the workplace and indeed across society is, is recognized and is given central importance in these rebuilding efforts to ensure their empowerment and to fully realize their potential. girls to grow up in a world fueled by lifelong learning, where all girls have key roles in teaching, facilitating, actively learning, and leading to make this world a more prudent, greener, more resilient, kinder, and even more inclusive. I want girls to grow up in a world where they are free to choose their career path and field of study without prejudice and discrimination by their peers and even their families. I want girls to grow up in a world where they are loved, cared about, and where their aspirations are met. A world in which they can become who they want to be and where they can pursue their dreams and make them come true.